So a backup camera on your van, RV, bus, whatever, can really uh, help to improve safety by giving you a better view of what's behind you. Uh, it also makes it uh, easier potentially to park in certain situations as you can see again exactly what's behind your vehicle as you're moving backwards. So I started thinking about getting a backup camera. Uh, well, actually, when I was traveling with Deborah in the in in her van, Fancy Free, and we were towing the uh, Echo behind us, and the issue was the Echo is such a small car that you actually couldn't even see it behind you when you were towing. So no matter how I adjusted the mirrors, I couldn't really see the car back there. Uh, and if I leaned way over, you know, I could see a little bit of uh, the driver's side of the vehicle, and that's it. So I had no way of seeing smoke if there's a tire was blowing out or uh, seeing any wobble if there was a problem with a hitch system or anything. So there was just no way of uh, seeing the vehicle while you were towing and so I started thinking that that would be a pretty handy to have a backup camera and be that we could activate while we were towing and be able to see the vehicle towed vehicle behind us I started thinking about it again when I got this van um, it's got really good mirrors it's easy to back up uh, but you can only see down the sides you can't see out the back and even if I have the back curtains open and everything you still can't see for about four feet down and, you know, and I thought about this specifically when I was at my son's house in Wyoming. They live on a cul-de-sac and there's just tons of kids riding and bicycling and riding scooters and running around and playing ball and everything in the street all the time. And it's really a little nerve-wracking backing out of there because you just can't see behind the vehicle. Funny story, that I was helping my daughter-in-law shuffle some vehicles and had my uh, four-year-old granddaughter in the back seat of the pickup truck. And as I started backing out, I'm checking my mirrors like normal. And th this vehicle has a backup camera in it. And so she points to the dashboard and says, look down there, pops. And so you know, my little co-pilot in the back seat, uh, you know, like driving is a video game, I guess. But uh, uh, it, it, it really did help having that extra view straight behind in conjunction conjunction with the mirrors. I don't think a backup camera replaces mirrors, but it does uh, give you an adjunct. It's an extra thing that helps to see right behind you and to make sure there's not something uh, disastrous about to happen or that you're not about to back over something you don't want to back over. So in this video, I'm going to be performing a wireless backup camera installation on my van. And we're going to be installing a Halo View. Uh, I believe let's see, the model is MC5111, and this is a wireless backup camera system with a 5-inch uh, display screen. So I'm excited to get this in and try it out. Uh, full disclosure before we go any further, uh, Halo View did uh, send me this uh, camera to test out. And, and do a review on uh, no strings attached they just ask that we do a review and and demonstrate how it is installed and works um, so they're not paying us to do this review or anything this is just a uh, a review based on uh, that they did send us the products we want to disclose that um, but as I said I was actually thinking about buying one anyways when when Halo View reached out to us and and want to know if we'd be interested to do a review uh, for our channel and uh, it's only the second time we've done a, re a review like this on uh, sponsored gear. Uh, the first one was the uh, solar panel I have on the roof from Lensun, and it was the same kind of range. They sent me a panel to test out, um, no strings other than just please, you know, do a review on it. So, but for us, there's a couple of criteria. We get we, we have people contact us multiple times a week asking us to do reviews on products and services, and this is only the uh, second time we've done that. And so, there's a couple of criteria for us that we employ, uh, and I think it's good for you to know this and the first is that the product or the service has to be uh, respectable and, and it has to have good reviews and a good reputation already because um, we're not interested in putting our reputation on the line for a questionable product. Uh, second so we want to make sure we do our research first and make sure it looks like it's a legit company and product. And then secondly, we're only going to do a review on a product or service if we feel it's going to be of value to our viewers and readers on our website. Uh, so if, if it doesn't line up well with uh, what we think our viewers would be interested in 
or something that's going to actually be useful to us, we're not going to do it. Um, so in this case, uh, you know, in the case of the solar panel, I mean, solar panels are always of interest to nomads and flexibles in particular. And just being a new technology, uh, the ETFE, we were glad to review that and, and share our experience how it works. And by the way, it's still working great. And so with backup cameras, again, a lot of people are starting to use backup cameras on RVs, buses, and even vans, and for good reason. As a matter of fact, a lot of newer cars are even coming with them pre-installed these days um, because it's such an improvement in safety by having them. So we feel this is something to be useful to people to see, so we're going ahead and go share, do this review and show how it works in this application. So we'll go ahead and get started and see how it goes installing and setting up and using this Halo View wireless backup camera. All right, so we're going to take a look at what's in the box here. There's the user manual for it, um, for the M5111. And it's a 720p, 5-inch uh, LCD wireless monitor and camera system. Well, first off, here's the camera itself. It's got a nice solid feel to it uh, and, and a wire. Uh, it's already installed on a mounting bracket and it's got Deaton's so you can easily adjust it. That, that's nice. So you can, once you got it mounted, you can change the angle a little bit if you need to. Um, that's a nice feature. Um, I kind of figured I'd have to, it would be screw adjusted. Um, there's the antenna port there because it's wireless. And it's, yeah, it's already mounted the bracket. This bracket's got four holes in it to screw into uh, your vehicle. Okay, here's the monitor system itself. Again, the cord is attached, um, antenna port on the top, and looks like maybe two different mount options on the back here, and some control buttons. And yeah, the bracket's on the side here for mounting too I guess so we'll get to that in a minute we pull out the rest of the hardware here um, looks like three antennas okay this this one's actually to use use it on if you're mounted on your license plate uh, and this one's for the rear view camera if you're mounting it on the roof and so this one would be for the monitor on the, on the, re the receiver okay th this is a license plate mount. This is really nice because uh, it gives you flexibility if you want to mount it on your license plate. Um, this would attach. Okay, you'd remove this bracket, looks like, and this would attach right to the base of the camera, and then it has the holes to mount it on your license plate bracket on your vehicle. So that's pretty cool. Um, that gives you flexibility. Uh, here's a. This looks like. Part of the mount system. Okay, here's the rest of it. Okay. All right. So here's. Looks these. I'm assuming these go together. This is a. Uh, this is part of the. Goes around the camera by the looks of it anyway. So we'll get to that. A, a monitor. There's a, another bracket that you could mount uh, if you to mount the the monitor in the front of your vehicle. Uh, as you can see what. Uh, okay. Also helps with a suction cup mount. Uh, and that's <clears throat> gives you know if you want to stick it on your windshield and not worry about putting screwing holes into your dashboard or something. Uh, that would be good. And then there's some wiring in here. Cigarette outlet adapter for power. This is nice. I, I don't. Um, <laughs> this is looking like it's going to be simpler than I thought to install this. I was kind of thinking it might be a little more complicated. I was envisioning having to connect wiring into my house system or vehicle system on the back for the camera and then in the front connecting into the vehicle system for when the ignition was on. This has got a, a power adapter so that's really nice. And a couple more cables here and then this one uh, this is the power supply a power supply cable for the camera just a positive and a negative. So one of the things that's interesting here is this system will support up to four uh, remote cameras connected to the same monitor so you can view them at different times or you can have a split screen and have two or four displaying uh, at, at your preference. <clears throat> this wire here is only the two wire um, so it may be a different cable you have to get I'm not sure but they do have a seven wire cable that uh, is available and that would allow you to connect wires to triggers 
Um, and they say that in their, in their literature that this is the most common setup is just a simple one camera installation. But with a uh, four camera, you could put four cameras on it. I would assume you, on like on a, you might want to do front, rear, and both sides would be my guess of how you might do that. Um, and you could leave them on uh, all four on a split screen, a quad display, or you could push the button on the thing to rotate between them uh, or you can set up the trigger wire so that when you different uh, electrical signals come in it changes the camera view so for example you could connect uh, you could have one going off the front and you could hit your uh, connect one to your uh, reverse lights then it switch to the rear camera automatically when you put the vehicle in reverse one of the nice things too with this system I didn't realize till I was just looking at it is it's got a record function so on the monitor here is a micro SD card slot and so you can actually record uh, all the video feed coming in as well. Um, I don't know how many people use that feature, but it's a nice option to have. You can record in 720p. Um, so that, that's pretty nice. Uh, one way I could see using that as a YouTuber, um, I could record uh, out the back. I'm, I'm installing this camera on the back for a backup camera, primarily for safety reasons, um, <clears throat> as I mentioned before. But... This would be nice because let's say if I'm traveling with Deborah and go through a beautiful uh, canyon in the mountains or something, right? And she's behind me, I could kick on the camera and record and actually uh, capture footage without having to go through setting up the GoPro in the back like we would normally do uh, to get a shot like that. So that's kind of fun. But anyway, back to what else in here. It is a bag with some screws and uh, let's see, some more screws and some kind of looks like maybe mounts or something. Uh, we'll have to get that open and get a better look. Can't see through all the plastic exactly what it is, but there we go. Oh, thumb screws, I think. Yeah, thumb screws for the for the um, for this mount probably. <laughs> all right, so I'll finish reading the directions and figure out. Uh, yeah, it does come with screws to mount everything. So that's nice. So it's pretty much everything. You know, so it looks like everything you need is right here. Um, ready to go. One thing that I was just noticing though that's real nice too is that this uh, if you're using the suction cup mount it's going to just screw into the back here and you mount it on your windshield uh, but this looks like a standard quarter 20 uh, thread so it's the same as is used on most or much of uh, camera gear there's two different sizes they use in camera gear but quarter 20 is a very popular one so if you it for most people i think probably one of these two is going to work fine the windshield mount or this bracket here but if for some reason you wanted to do something different uh that's just a quarter 20 mount so you're gonna have a lot of options out there for hardware you could use to mount this thing so that's pretty cool uh there's going to be a lot of flexibility is a over the user manual real quick. Uh, pretty basic, simple. Uh, looks like a very simple installation. I'm actually very pleased with how uh, simple everything is and how uh, uh, they got everything included that you need. Um, this is the two, like I said, there's two different antennas for the back. They're labeled as far as which one you'd use if you put it in your license plate frame and which one you use if you put it on the roof. Uh, I'm going up high on the roof on this one. Right now I'm just traveling with just the van, but I can't rule out in the future potentially getting a hitch haul or a small trailer or something so in order to future proof against any of that I'll just go ahead and go up high on the roof that'll give me a good view of everything behind me anyway but it's nice that you got the uh, flexibility for how you want to mount it but this thing you can suction mount the monitor on the front to the dashboard and plug into the cigarette lighter it's got it's wireless and then the, the camera itself you could mount it to your license plate and if you do that the only thing you got to do is connect those two wires to a positive and to a ground uh, so that's that's the only other than that to be a super simple installation anybody literally anybody could do this installation then uh if you can handle connecting a positive and a negative to a to a power somewhere home if you're comfortable with that part, uh, you're dead. that's literally all you'd have to do to set this thing up. Um, and if not, you probably wouldn't be hard to find somebody uh, that could help you with that little one little connection anyway. So very simple to set up. I thought it would be a lot more complicated, so uh, we're going to dive into it. And the first thing I do is decide where I want to mount the camera in the front. All right, one quick note, I was looking through the manual again and <laughs> figured out that this part I wasn't sure of. As it looked at some kind of a frame, is actually a sun visor for the monitor and it just snaps on and uh, you can oh, there it goes there's that just snaps on like that and you can see the hood it makes then uh, pretty much a hood around the camera so that should definitely help with sun glare on bright days so that's pretty cool 
and the bracket they call it a it's the mounting bracket here um, just attaches to the camera with these little thumb screws um, right on the side there so I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go that route if I can find someone on the dashboard where it'll fit I think that'll uh, be the better route because uh, we I already have the GoPro up in the windshield with this let's take the GoPro off uh, I leave the suction mount up but I take the GoPro off the camera itself off whenever I'm parking in the sun and putting my Reflectix windshield screen up because uh, it gets super hot between the glass and the Reflectix. So, and I would have the same concern with this about it uh, overheating the camera or the monitor or just baking it, you know. So, I don't want to do that. So, I want to see if I can mount it uh, using this on the dashboard somewhere. All right, so I had a couple of options I could work with here, I think. Um, my, my default thing would be to mount it on the roof here. This is a conversion van, it's actually got wood behind the velour here, so I could screw that in there. And that would be a real nice, comfortable position for me to use, uh, for using it. Um, but, uh, the, the antenna needs to mount on the top, and they need to be, it needs to be upright, so I don't have room for the antenna there. So I need to figure out somewhere else to put it. Uh, in that case, if I put it up there, it would sort of replace my rear view mirror that fell off a while ago, that I never bothered putting back on because I knew I was getting a, cam a backup camera anyway. <laughs> Another option I kind of like here is sitting on the dashboard like this. I really like that uh, setup. It's in a very comfortable place to look when I'm driving. Uh, it's right in between as I'm scanning my two mirrors. is right in the middle so I can see that comfortably. Um, it's easy, still easy to reach to reach the control. Pretty easy to reach to reach the controls and everything. Um, and you have room for the antenna there and it doesn't really, because of the angle, it doesn't really interfere with my view of the road at all uh, because it's just the you know, it doesn't it doesn't block very little of the windshield, um, just a tiny bit. Um, if I move it like so, it actually would block even less right there. So that that I like that setup. The only thing is I don't want to drill, really drill holes in my dashboard, and I'm not sure if I put um, like double-sided adhesive or you know Velcro. I don't know if that would stick to the dashboard because I've been armoring along the dashboard. So <laughs> maybe I don't know if that would work. That's actually not a bad set there, and then the power cord could just come right around to my cigarette out lighter here. Um, I've already got my cell booster here. Um, I don't have a lot of other space up here. I, I lose some because I have the seat turned around. Otherwise I could put it like on this side on top of the doghouse. And I could mount it on the front of the doghouse here. Um, uh, I, I guess that probably wouldn't be a problem because it's 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 not. I, I was thinking originally it would be difficult to uh, if I have to pull the doghouse to work on the engine or something uh, that it would be difficult. But, but as it turns out, it's, uh, it's just a cigarette out lighter plug, so it's no big deal uh, as far as that goes. So I, th I think either there or on the doghouse. i got to think about this for a minute. I'll get back with you. All right, so I decided I like the dashboard position best uh, if I can pull it off. So I just ran over to our local Menards, which is just about a block from the city park where I've been hanging out today. And I'm just going to see if I can find some like double-sided velcro, or, you know, velcro with adhesive on it that will hopefully stick to the dashboard. Uh, if the velcro doesn't work with the adhesive, then, uh, you know, uh, hopefully it will. If it doesn't, then I'll have to decide between putting screws in there or attaching it to the doghouse. Well, the doghouse is a little low, so it's not going to be as convenient. Uh, I'd like to keep it close to normal eye level uh, just for it's easier to check quick when I'm backing up. So we're going to see how that goes and... Uh, there's always a suction cup mount for the windshield if I need to too, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try the Velcro thing first and see if that'll do it for me. All right, so I have the monitor installed here up on the dashboard. I went ahead and went with the Velcro. I uh, use a Velcro. Hopefully it holds up. If not, I think I might end up just screwing it in place there with a the bracket because I do like that position. But we'll see. Uh, the antenna needs to be up went straight when you're using it. But I have it folded down because the Velcro is in the way right now. I use the uh, just a 12 volt outlet. I need to pick up another adapter outlet here because I only have uh, just the one, and I also use it to charge my phone and stuff. But uh, this button on the end, it's actually this is actually turns it on and off, so you can actually leave it plugged in, and then just turn it on and off with that toggle switch. The red light LED light comes on to tell you that it's on power, and this is the power button here that turns the camera on. And you can see it's telling us here that it has no signal because we don't have a camera connected yet. All right, so I mentioned yesterday I was doing my plan. And yes, yesterday we hit with a crazy storm yesterday afternoon uh, that came in while I was waiting for it to cool down. So I didn't end up getting to finish this yesterday. I was going to put it uh, mounted up here on the top. Uh, but if I do that, really I'm going to end up having to tap into my house. The only convenient wiring I'll have is my house wiring. And... Uh, sec and so I'd, I also have to drill more holes in the fiberglass, which I'd rather not do if I can avoid it. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and go with a license plate mount here. And light this little mount just like so. 
and, and I think this will work nicely. Um, and then what I'll do for power is I'm just going to tap it into the uh, license plate light that's right here. And that'll be real convenient. And basically, anytime I turn on my parking lights or headlights, this will be powered up. Uh, since I'm planning on using this uh, primarily as a backup camera and uh, occasionally for filming while I'm behind me while I'm driving, um, this will work out just fine. I'll just turn my headlights on and I'll have power to the camera. And I won't have to worry about the camera pulling a phantom draw on my uh, house system 24 7, even when I'm not using it. So we'll go ahead and get started. It's just two screws to take this out. And I'll put a couple screws in here to hold this on the license plate and uh, we'll connect this using some I'll splice into the wire there and I'll try and show that as I go as best I can. <laughs> Right, so I got everything installed here. Uh, super simple installation. Uh, this was really a piece of cake. Uh, I just drilled a small hole here, up here, and I ran the wire up in, patched into the wire for the um, light up above using some butt splice connectors. Very simple installation. That's the hardest part of the whole install right here. Is just finding somewhere to connect the wiring, and that was you know very simple. If, you got, if you've done any uh, uh, very basic uh, wiring skills, just be able to crimp, cut and crimp a couple of wires, you're you're totally all set. Uh, so we're going to turn it on and see how it works. All right, so pairing is supposed to be super simple. Uh, with this, there's a couple different ways you can do it. So there's a monitor on here with no signal yet, so we turn on the lights here. That should provide power to the camera. Oh, there it is. That did it automatically. I just powered up the camera. You can see the that's the lawn in the park behind me, and there's a street and the buildings across the way. Uh, there's some noise there. I'll turn the volume off on this because I'm not concerned with listening to it. But if you're using this as a security type setup while you're camping or something, that would be, could be really handy having the option to have audio from outside your rig uh, and hear what's going on outside sometimes. But in any case, uh, it's as simple as turning, turning the camera on and off, simple as turning my lights or parking lights on or off. So I just turn the parking lights off and the camera goes out. So anytime I want to use the camera, I just have to pull on my parking lights or headlights. And I do have a dinger in here that reminds me so I don't forget them on anyways. Plus, of course, I have the reminder now on the dashboard, I guess, that I have a camera there. Okay, so I got this thing all set up. This is so simple. Um, I, and I, I know I've said that a couple times, but I really expect this to be a lot more complicated. I, I, I just assumed I'd have to hunt for uh, uh, ignition-specific wiring on the front end to uh, use the camera. I took up the front monitor and I'd have to hook the back one into wiring in the back and it was just very simple. Um, the liter front one literally just plugs into the cigarette lighter like I showed you. It has a button on it, you turn it off, on and off. The back camera is, is as simple as just connecting two wires, a positive and a negative. You can connect them to anything you want. I would not connect them to um, something that's constantly hot on your vehicle electrical system. She may drain your battery eventually. I don't know how much power the camera pulls. It's not much. I'm sure, but over the course of the very tiny wires, like 22 or 24 gauge wires, but over the course of, uh, you know, multiple days, you might drain your battery down. You can connect into your house system, and I did think about doing that, and I probably would have done that if I'd gone up high, and then you'd have a 24 hour power on the camera, so anytime you turned on your ignition here, you'd automatically have power up front um, to the camera monitor. But, uh, again, it's going to pull some phantom power over the course of, of days. I don't park for a week. I don't necessarily want to be burning up however many amps of uh, power when it's in a limited supply. But by tapping into the license plate light, and you can do the same with the parking light line or anything, um, I just figured the license plate was pretty safe. It's going there anyways. It's right close. And there's a little, you know, if the license if the, one of those wires comes loose, um, I'm not going to have a tail light out or anything. I'll have a license plate light out, which is, you know, and it's pretty easy to get to. It was just two screws for me to pop that back door cover off to access everything. So um, I'm going to go put the back door cover back on. Speaking of that, but I'm very impressed with how easy this is to install. So far, the adhesive of Del Velcro is working on the dashboard. I may move that in the future if it's a uh, you know, if it's a problem with stand or I may screw it down. I like the position of it, though. Um, I am going to pick up a micro SD card so I can play around with recording on this. So I'll, uh, I'll provide some updates on that in the future uh, when I get a chance to actually do that. Um, but so the nice thing about this right now is it's, it's I got a real-time 
five inch display of what's going on behind me not just when I'm backing up and I could have tapped that in by the way if I only wanted the feed when I was uh, in reverse I could put adapt it into the reverse lights um, but I, I, I like having that all the time I'm driving so I don't have to worry about it it's just on I can see what's going on behind me and like I said as a YouTube creator there may be times it probably won't be like a lot but there may be times I want to get a shot of something behind me and I'll be able to do that using the record function which I'm going to try out real soon uh, as soon as I pick up a card to get to the store again. I'm very excited with how simple this thing was to set up and, and I'm impressed with the quality of what I'm seeing so far and I really like the bright display. It's super bright, um, nice to look at, easy to see. Uh, I like that they send a lens hood around it so pretty happy with it and uh, you know I, I definitely so far can recommend this if you're looking for a camera. I like how easy this was to install and, and I like the quality of what I've seen so far and the prices seem pretty reasonable for what you're getting and everything that you need to install this thing was included except for those couple little uh, splice connectors I used and you may need something different depending on how you choose to install it but they were like two bucks for a package of them at Walmart so they're not expensive uh, very very cheap option there if you go the route uh, that I did so I hope you found this uh, helpful seeing this review and seeing how easy it can be to install a backup camera that you can use just for whether you're just backing up or as uh, you know external security type thing uh, and in this case it even has recording functions so that's kind of cool um, let me know in the comments what you think do you use a backup camera system now uh, does it have these same features or do you think a backup camera might be something that would be useful to you uh, in your travels so let me know what you think there in the comments and thanks for watching everybody we'll see you down the road